What's up, Comic Book Nation? Lucas Siegel here to talk about a CW show, but not one of the four we're always talking about. A new science fiction show may have gone under your radar a little bit, but we're tuning your signal to it so you don't miss out. That show is Frequency, a trippy new take on a movie from 2000. In this incarnation, a daughter in 2016, Raimi, played by Peyton List, starts communicating using a strange CB radio with her father, Frank, 20 years in the past, starting just before he's supposed to die. She saves his life, but screws up everything else in the timeline by doing so, and has to team up with him 20 years apart to fix things and get the perfect version of her life. We have Frank Sullivan himself, Riley Smith, on the line today to talk about Frequency. Riley, how are you? Good, how you guys doing? Not bad, not bad, man. Uh, I want you to know I barely managed to resist doing a whole radio bit there, telling you I needed your help, press to talk, all that stuff. I, I, I did manage to resist it, though. WQ2IV, WQ2IV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Riley, I gotta ask you, how's life in 1996? Uh, it has been so much fun getting that soundtrack every time that we go back to your half of the story. Uh, yeah, I, it's all new to me, too. Um, we'd seen the pilot a lot before it aired, uh, so that wasn't a surprise. But everything since then is, uh, I'm right there with you guys, uh, and it's blowing me away. I love the music. I grew up in the 90s. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, was a, I was actually a senior in high school. Uh, the, the year that uh, Frank Sullivan's existing here in 96. So, so I know it really well and I know the music. So to hear something like Wonderwall, it gave me goosebumps when that one came on. Um, but Collective Soul last week was cool. And then uh, last night I had uh, my dad dance to uh, Shoot, yeah. uh, which we all remember. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up so I didn't have to. I didn't, I didn't know if that was you know an embarrassing dad moment uh, for you or... Yeah, well, you know, you see in the script, uh, Frank's dancing with uh, young Raimi, and it's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm not really going to try to dance, but I'm not a good dancer anyway. So uh, so I decided to try to emulate, like, the 90s dance dad, the guy that we've all seen. I think I, I saw my dad do it a few times, and uh, and it's funny. So I had a blast with it, actually. There was, there was gifts going up, and uh, that made me laugh. I like that. <laughs> Well, how does the disparate timeline help you get engrossed in the character of Frank? What does uh, being so 90s out uh, help you do to, to get closer to Frank? Well, I mean, it, I don't know if it's necessarily the, the, the year that makes me closer to Frank. I think it's just the situation that he's in in general. Um, you know, uh, when you're on set, it very... It, it looks like the 90s, so that kind of helps draw you in uh, between the, the calendars on the wall and the posters and the, the books and the, um, the VHSs. Uh, the other day I came across Field of Dreams, and that was kind of funny because it, that was shot like 30 minutes from where I, I lived. And, uh, it, you know, it's just yeah, that kind of stuff will help put you in. Yeah. yeah. I, I went to but, University uh, of Iowa, too, so I'm familiar with the area. <laughs> You're a Hawkeye? Yeah, man. Oh man, that's so great! I knew we were going to be friends. <laughs> um, well, we'll talk more about that later. But yeah, I sure. I, I love diving into Frank. Frank's great. It, it, he's not a far departure from me. I think there's a lot of different layers to him. Um, I just uh, you know, he, he was, it was the kind of role that was made for me. So I, I don't really have to uh, I don't really have to, to to go too far. I just have to dig into all the different the layers that he is. Well. It's interesting, your closest relationship on the show is with someone you basically never get to spend any screen time with. Um, I know that you and Peyton have about a decade of an acting relationship together, but what are the challenges of building your on-show relationship when you have to do it sitting alone with a radio? Well, uh, you know, as you said, Peyton and I have... Uh 20, not, not 20, 15, 12 years of experience together. We've been reading together forever. And so we know each other so well. Yeah. And uh, so whether we had each other in the room or not, I, I could hear her take on her side of the lines. Um, but it's nice for me to deal with each other that we, we would be there for each other for uh, every off-camera uh, radio scene. So basically, uh, I'll be sitting in a little corner 
um, tucked in like with a little pen, uh, a flashlight pen, just reading the lines and, and vice versa for her. She always knits when she's sitting off camera. Uh, I don't know who she's knitting for. I asked her, she's going to make me a blanket with all this off camera time. But she's over there knitting and I'm usually on my phone tweeting you guys or something, uh, surfing the web. So that's kind of what we do. It's just a whole day of sitting in a corner, a dark corner. That's wacky. I can't. I can't quite wrap my head around it. it I, I guess it would be like uh, my producer sitting here on his phone right now, and then deciding to uh, suddenly chat with me. That's uh, that's pretty cool, though. That, I like that you guys have that extra connection. Uh, so time travel, huge right now. Um, I, there's at least six different shows on TV currently dealing with it. Uh, three just on the CW. Um, why do you yeah. think that this idea of manipulating time is so intriguing that it's being explored so many different ways on TV right now? You know, it's crazy because uh, when I got the script, I, I didn't really, it was one of the first ones I read and immediately was like, this is the one I want to do. And I didn't really get a grasp for what else was out there. So I didn't know that uh, the time thing was such a popular thing. That was just a random stroke of luck of me choosing this script early. Um, and then luckily it became not only popular with the pilot scripts, but it became popular uh, to pick them up. Um, so it is funny to me that we keep getting compared to other ones. Like uh, I know Timeless is one that people compare us to a lot. Um, and I, I think that we're all so different, especially ours. It's so much more rooted in reality and it's so much more rooted in uh, the family connection, the um, I guess the drama. Um, the time element is more of something that's a payoff immediately. Mm. Uh, so I think it that makes it more exciting too. But, you know, I think that what I read and what we're trying to really portray is the, the heart of the matter, which is the, the dynamic between Frank Ramey and, and Julie Sullivan. Well, I mean, you might as well be uh, reading my questions here because I, I was going to tell you, you know, I really do feel like the character focus and the relationship focus is what is primary and what's strongest on the show, but then the science fiction elements let you tap into that. What is it about science fiction in general uh, that, that you see as being such a bonus into tapping into those relationships? Well, I mean, the sci-fi element, I think, draws in a really smart fan base uh, that we want watching the show. I, I think that we pride ourselves on being very uh, a smart show. Jeremy Carver is a genius and his writing is um, every day it just like the stuff we get. I'm, I'm, I look at some of the cast and I'm like, not only are we on a TV show and we get paid to do this, but look at the material we get. And so we, you know, we've been very fortunate to get, I think some of the best material for the sci-fi uh, time travel genres that we're up against. But um, I think that, not only will it bring in that fan base that wants a, a smart show that's going to make them think and keep them on the edge of their seat, but like I said before, it also gives us this instant uh, uh, connection with uh, this thriller aspect almost to it, where we're, you know, in our show, one thing changes everything. It's, a, it's just a domino effect. And so we're really going to see that episode by episode, scene by scene almost. And and that, that kind of is driving us through all this, this heart and heavy stuff with the family. And so uh, there's a little bit of everything for, uh, for the audience, which, and it moves so fast that I don't think you ever really get tired of it. It's like it bounces around. And I mean, like I said before, this is all new for me too. I mean, it's one thing to read it and shoot it and to see it. Yeah. So I'm kind of like that right where you guys are. Where I'm just watching it going, dang, like, this is, this is exciting. Yeah, man. Uh, now I know the cast isn't exactly split in two because, of course, we've got you know Mackay hanging out uh, in in both timelines. But is there anyone in particular in the future half of the cast that uh, you don't get to work with that you would like to? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, really, so far we've all gotten to work with each other. You'll see in one way or another. Um, they're doing a really cool job of threading us all together in different years. Um, so is there anybody? No, I've worked with Makai. I've worked with uh, Anthony who plays Stan. You know what? You know, I, I'm lying to you guys. Um, here it is. Daniel Bonjour and Lenny Jacobson who played Daniel and, uh, and, uh, and the next door neighbor, Gordo. Um, okay. yeah. I don't see how in reality I'm going to get to work with them 
we've also tried to figure this out, but we're far overdue for a beer. Like the three of us should be having a beer in a, in a bar somewhere. Uh, but the problem is, in my reality, Gordo would be like uh, eight, right. and uh, Daniel would be uh, yeah an eight year old boy. It'd be weird if Frank was hanging out with two eight year old boys in a bar. A little, um, a little. So yeah, weird. I don't know. Quote <laughs> of the day, right there. I do think that uh, Frank and adult Gordo would get along really well, though. Oh yeah, for sure. And I love Gordo. I love the character, and uh, a lot of it is just Lenny being Lenny. Um, <laughs> and I know a lot of. I'm loving it. It, It's who he is. He's such a lovable, great guy. Well, we have to take our own look into the future a bit. So what can you tease about what's coming up for Frank? Uh, You're you're still obviously trying to keep your estranged wife safe right now, and uh, she's not quite buying it at the moment. Uh, So what's what's coming up? Um, God, I I hate this because I want to say so much, and I don't know what I can say, but there's a lot (laughs) coming. Uh, like to the point where uh, we just got a new episode today, uh, number 10, and I can't wait. I'm reading it as soon as we're done with this uh, because I, I flipped through it like an audience is watching the show. And I'm like, no, no, oh, my God, oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> so uh, a lot, lot's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of twists and turns. Um, like some, some uh, uh, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, a lot's going to happen. A lot changes. And, like, you know, you'll have to just, it gets very exciting. Well, uh, we we don't just share that Iowa connection. Uh, we're actually based out here in Nashville, and uh, of no course, way. of course, you were on the show. So I know you've been out here yourself, um, and I know that you yeah. are also a musician. Do you have any uh, music projects that you're working on right now? Uh, well, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, so last year I was living in Nashville doing uh, doing that show, um, and I had the time of my life. I love Nashville. You guys are so lucky. That would be next to Vancouver where I am right now shooting um, Nashville's A. Uh, those are my two favorites. But um, while I was there doing the show, I, I decided that I wanted to, to make an album, a solo record, uh, kind of just encompassing my time in uh, Nashville. Um, so I, I knew I had a good opportunity to write with a lot of great writers uh, who wanted the opportunity to get their songs on the show. And, and so it was kind of a, a nice cohesive thing. And I, I ended up writing with some amazing people, came up with a, a great album. We've been putting it together for the last year and uh, signed with management down there. Um, and we're, I think we're about to get it launched. Uh, what do they call it? Record dropping um, <laughs> in uh, like Christmas, January. So, uh, you know, and then hopefully as soon as I go on hiatus with this show, we're going to hit the road. I'm going to do a radio tour for the, the album. Uh, we're going to um, go probably on a college uh, circuit. Um, so we're going to do that whole thing, uh, European tour. And then, uh, yeah, I should say it's called Riley Smith official.com. That's the, um, that's the website where you can, uh, go check out the music. There's a free download of the new single and all that jazz. Awesome. man. So, yeah. Well, thanks for asking. If it uh, brings you back here to Nashville, you'll have to drop on by the offices and we'll, uh, we'll have an, another chat. Uh, thank you. Thanks, you so- thank you so much for chatting with us, Riley. Before I let you go, we are comicbook.com. And you are on the CW, practically the superhero network. So I got to ask you, if there's any superhero out there that you would like to play, who would you choose? Oh man, I think uh, I would probably I would probably go with Superman. I mean, he's just the iconic one I grew up with. Yeah. Close second would be Batman. Um, I, I I never really saw myself as a superhero actor, um, but it would be a blast. All right, man. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, comic book fans, for watching. Make sure you're tuning into Frequency Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. 8 central on The CW, and check out RileySmithOfficial.com for the latest on Riley's music projects. For comicbook.com, I'm Lucas Siegel.